Welcome to the channel, my name is Anas, I'm a final year medical student studying in London and hopefully in less than a year I'll be working here as a junior doctor. And what that also means is I don't have much time left in university. And even though I can't say that, I'm not just a little bit happy about that, I probably won't have many more opportunities to really capture what a day in the life of a medical student really looks like, especially in one of the most exciting and vibrant cities in the world. So that's the purpose of this video, to give you a realistic insight into a day in medical school, but also act as a reference point for me to look back on and think, you know, what was I doing a couple years ago? Was I actually working or just joking around? I'll actually watch this video, hopefully. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you like this kind of thing and you want an insight into med school life, then I post similar things on my Instagram as well. So feel free to check that out. And yeah, subscribe to the channel. Let's go. I usually wake up between 5.30 to 7, depending on what time of the year it is and what I have on that day. I usually get up, brush my teeth, take a shower. Now comes to how I dress. Depending on the day, it's either smart or casual. On a day that I have clinical placements, a shirt and some trousers usually does the job. A pair of double monk shoes and a camel coat. On any other day, I literally wear anything else. I usually prepare a fairly standard breakfast, maybe some eggs, spicing it up with some proper seasoning. You know, you've got to have the flavors on point. Then I just sit down, chill, watch some YouTube videos. One of the interesting things about being a medical student is that you become really super specialist in how the body works, how different diseases happen, how different cells work together, the immune cells, the heart cells, and all of that. So for example, in our third year of medical school, in our learning objectives, we had over 400 different medical conditions to learn specifically how they happen, how to test for them, how to investigate, what kind of blood tests do you need to do, what kind of scans do you need to do, and then moving on from that, once you've found out what it is, then specifically the treatment plan, what kind of medication it is, or maybe if there isn't any medication for it. And the drawback of that is that for many of us in the medical field, that becomes the only thing that we know really well, because there just isn't enough time to do other things. I've been telling myself for the past few years that I want to learn a bit of computer science and coding. So this is what I've been trying to use my mornings for, for around 45 minutes. This doesn't necessarily happen every morning. Sometimes I just do it in the evening instead, but I'm hoping it will be a way to get a bit more lateral thinking in my life. After this, I usually just pick up my bag and go into clinical placements. So currently I'm just sitting in my GP clinic room. Yeah, I do have my own room. And, um, and at the moment I'm on my five week GP rotation. So GP general practice, which is the same as family medicine in the US, if that's where you are. And one of the amazing things about being in final year uh, and at the end of your degree is that you get to work a lot more independently. So if you're at the hospital on the wards, you really feel part of the team, you get to do everything that everyone else does, you know, whether that be kind of investigating or examining the patients or trying to come up with a management plan, of course, all under supervision. But this is especially true when you're in GP because you know you get to have your own room, have your own clinic, your own patients booked in who you see by yourself. Now I might just do some b-roll or a sequence of this room if you like to see that. I 
I usually start making my way back home after clinics. On a Wednesday, I finish around 12.30 p.m. in the afternoon. I get back home, drop in my bag and just knock out on the bed for a while. This is usually a good time for me to reply to emails, reply to YouTube comments or Instagram DMs. I also spend some time editing videos or just watching some Netflix. After this, I like to change out of these work clothes for my next session. Okay, so you've seen what clinical rotations look like. Usually in final year, we don't have as many lectures as we used to. Like first and second used to be just only lectures. Now, barely any, to be honest. But luckily, we do have one today, uh, and it's going to be about the situational judgment test or exam that we have, which I'm going to talk about a bit later on because it's kind of a bit of a weird exam. Uh, but right now, I'm running a bit late. Not very, but late enough for me to come late if I stop filming outside. So I'm going to head off. I've um, taken the laptop because just because I forgot to charge my iPad last night, which is a bit peak. But I think we should just head off because I need to be there on time. Okay, so we've just finished our session on the situational judgment exam or test uh, where we just kind of went through a few questions. We had a few junior doctors who had done this exam either last year or the year before and they were giving advice and also going through kind of questions and giving their rationale for why some answers are better than others. But you might not know what that test is, so very briefly in like 15 seconds, um, this exam can be very sticky. So for example, imagine this. All of our grades from first year, second year, third year, up until sixth year combined is 50%. And then the rest of the 50% come from this one exam. This can make it very difficult because if you did really well, this exam can kind of really bring your, bring your grade down. Um, likewise, if you didn't do that well in medical school, then this exam can bring you up. Uh, but also it can put the top people further to the top um, and vice versa. Also, uh, this exam will determine where in the country you're going to work. So if you want to work in more of the competitive areas, which is in central London, then you do need to do um, at least decent in this test and have really high scores from your medical school. Uh, so yeah, a lot rides on this. Um, so hopefully it goes well. Usually once a week we meet up with a few friends to discuss some of the questions that we've done uh, a few days before that and our rationales for why we think some answers are better than others and then uh, we look at the answers and things like that. So that usually that becomes quite interesting. So you'll see a few shots of that a bit later on. But in the meantime, since this video is titled A Day in My Life at Medical School in London, it's only right that I show you um, a sequence of what London looks like. Um, I haven't shot it yet. But I will. Uh, I'm sure it will take quite a lot of time, so I hope you enjoy that sequence and then after that you'll see the SJT session. So here we go.
love you guys. Alhamdulillah. But hold on, don't we remember the other question where the, it had to do with a pharmacist and you'd rather keep it within the team first? Pharmacist is within the team. No, but last time it was the pharmacist was outside the team. No, no, but it's not the senior doctor. It didn't say whether they're in the team or not. It's just like asking it. Well, we have to kind of, I don't know. I don't know anyway, because we have to understand their yes. rationale. In addition to formal teaching that we have, which includes lectures and small group teaching sessions, a huge part of being a student at university is being able to learn independently. We call this self-directed learning. This is where you take time out of your day to do extra studying, making sure that your knowledge is up to par. One of the things that medical students are infamously known for is the work rate. The only way to learn the huge amounts of content required each year is by putting in long hours of study. Sometimes you might be the second or last person in the room, working in the computer room, in the library, in the study rooms, often alone. One of the best ways that I usually do work is to cover multiple choice questions online. You can head to the library and pick out books and make notes to improve your understanding. Then you have learning from a clinical perspective. This is the practical side of being a doctor. The way we learn is by practicing with friends, in groups or in pairs. First, we learn how to examine someone. We practice examining the heart, listening to the four different valves. We learn how to listen to the chest. Do you hear any wheezing, crackles? How to look at someone from the end of the bed and instantly figure out and get an idea of what could be going on. But it's not just examination, it's also communication. Being able to ask the right questions to figure out the problems and what could be going on. We practice this by one person being the actor and one person being the doctor. I personally use my iPad to write down what the other person is asked, ticking specific things and giving feedback at the end. Okay, so basically I've just finished editing that video which you just saw. Uh, and yeah, to be honest, I'm quite happy about it, man. Uh, and to be honest, this has been one of the biggest projects I think I've taken on uh, on my channel. I wanted the quality to be uh, to be slightly different um, in terms of what's on YouTube and study vloggers and things like that. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it. Spent about a week to plan, about two days to film, and then half a week to edit and add all the effects. And then with uni and all of that, it just took a lot of time. So. It was, it took time, yeah. Uh, a couple of things now, just before we end the video, uh, or two things. Number one, uh, follow me on the socials, It'll, they'll be here somewhere. And number two, you saw how uh, we practice OSCE and communication skills and history taking. So for any medical students out there who are watching this video, uh, I know there's not a lot of resources to do with that aspect, you know, how to take different types of histories like chest pain and breathlessness and etc. whatever it is, uh, and how to approach, you know, asking difficult questions and approaching different scenarios. So what I've done is I've gone with a few friends and we're starting a different channel, which you'll find on here uh, called Doctor's Manual. And on there, we're gonna post loads of clinical uh, and medical stuff, whatever comes to our mind, specifically with communication skills and OSCE and all of that. Uh, so go ahead and follow that because there will be some amazing content for medical students and healthcare uh, professionals and healthcare students on there. The link will be in the description and also here's like a kind of video roll up of what we did. Uh, we've posted uh, one video so far and we've got a couple coming as well. So that's it. Safe.